Well, what is actionable intelligence? What is it that we can do with the data that's all around us, that's information that we can tap into? As I look across this room and I see uh, students and faculty members and uh, as well as members of business, this is a question that we need to figure out. We need to figure out how to use this information we've seen today the right way. What I want you to come away with today is that we can, we're all made up of data. And this is a quick way to introduce myself to you. You can read seven times faster than what I can in terms of speaking. And there are three words for you to know. Know, decide, as the last speaker just talked about, and also act. Having actionable intelligence means having the right information in the right person's hands, in time, in order to improve outcomes and really make a difference. So where does this look? Where do we start with this? You've all heard big data and data scientists. And they worked very hard. Hundreds of the smartest minds worked very hard on a phenomenon that we're seeing now. They tried to figure out who would be in this new position? What type of person would it be? And they spent months, sometimes years ahead of time, preparing and came up last year with who would be in the lead. And the difference was <laughs> this. Everyone was wrong. <laughs> what happened? The big data wasn't big enough. The analytics weren't robust enough. What was it? You have to give Trump credit. He read the American people. Americans for the past eight years, in spite of the progress, in spite of the relative safety from external threats, have heard negative, negative, negative news. They've heard jobs are leaving America. They've heard how the, the terrorist is at their door. They've heard things that is the intent to scare them and make them feel uncertainty. And so a gentleman comes in and says, we have seen this happen and we can do better. And people follow. Is it difficult to really understand and to answer those tough questions? What has happened to the economy? Yes, it's difficult. It's so difficult, in fact, that as we're busy with our jobs and with our lives, we don't have time to dig in and understand why. And so all we can solidify our thoughts with are the sound bites that we hear and what we read. We can't lack the facts. We don't have time to delve deeper. And so let me just do a, a quick check as a professor here. You know, I always would like to ask questions, and I will ask you questions. So do you all have a device like this, some sort of smartphone, internet? Anyone uh, have a phone without the internet, kind of uh, very conservative these days? No? OK. So all of us have this type of device, right? Great. Well, that means that we have some big data right in our hands. And for me, the journey to actionable intelligence was very personal. My mom, a professor, an avid basketball player at the age of 74 years old, was in the hospital. My father gives me a call. Keith, son, your mom's in the hospital. I drove over, and there she was, laying down, unable to move or speak. We went to the doctor. Doctor, what happened? And the doctor said, listen, she had a stroke, but I'm very busy. Go over to the nurse's station. We go over to the nurse's station. There's computers all around, information. We asked the nurses, can you tell us what happened? Said, oh, sir, we're very busy. And we pressed, and she, they said, oh, go to the records department. After two frustrating days, we weren't able to get that much information. We moved her to Columbia University Presbyterian Hospital. There, I went over to the doctor and said, doctor, we didn't really know what was the situation. Could you tell us? And he went, just a moment, and printed out and took me through exactly what had happened and the plan of care. He had all the information available to him. I decided, let me take a little bit further and asked him, can I see the MRI scan, the brain scan? He walked over to a computer in the hallway and said, let me show you, and he described. I said, bigger hospital, thousands more patients, but this doctor had time to spend with me. Why? Because he had the data at his fingertips. He didn't have to search. He didn't have to ask. It was all right there. 
this is the vision of actionable intelligence, what we need to be able to establish, and that what you can establish. So the question, what city is this? I'm giving you some unstructured data. It's a picture. What city is this? Can anyone guess? Go ahead. Kyoto. Kyoto. It looks like Kyoto a little bit. Maybe the Tokyo Town. No, no, no. It's not Kyoto. OK, let me give you some more data. Singapore's versus Hong Kong's GDP. Singapore's ahead. Congratulations. Continues to be. <laughs> this city that I just showed you is one of the smart cities in the world. Bigger picture. What city? On this side. What city? Hmm? No idea. Let's look at the countries, the country's GDP. The country it's in, these are the types of millionaires that live in the city. So far, we hadn't gotten to the right continent. In fact, this is Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos, Nigeria. Now, I noticed that none of you went to your phone and took a picture, like you could have, and sent it to Google and said, hey, this is Lagos, Nigeria. That's, that's fast, right? But we have to use these things. So they're in our hand. We pay a subscription for them. They're a big data device. Are we learning about the world like we could with them? So actionable intelligence is about being able to take things a step further. We have an overview of a city. We're able to take a look. And I want to show you three levels of how actionable intelligence can help us make better decisions. The first level, we can see delivery locations, where deliveries can take place. As we drill further in, as a company, I want to be able to see, can we service our customers around Singapore? Here are trucks that are being managed by VersaFleet, one of your fellow members of the student, Shamir, and one of my favorite students, actually. And here, he's placed in the hands of businesses around the world the data about where's the shipment, what is it going to be, what am I picking up. But if you're in the faculty of law, how could you use this? Now you can see that the truck was moving at a certain speed during the entire transportation. And so was there an accident? Perhaps. So you can have the data before, during, and after, and admit that into court and say, look at the facts. This is the information we had. If you're working in national service and perhaps you service with the police, you know that people in Singapore, as they drive toward a speed camera, slow down. <laughs> but what happens when they drive past the speed camera? I, shh, shh, don't, uh, they speed up, right? And so this data if viewed by the authorities, shows your speed during the entire destination, from start to destination. And so then you can see, oh wait, uh, this car drove over the speed limit for this amount of minutes. Ticket. Interesting. Scary. How we use this can be the, uh, one of the choices that we make. The other level is to go deeper in. Who is the driver? What's their social network like? Who do they know? What inspires them to work with us? What's the risk of them leaving? What's their relationship with competitors? What might happen to our product? Or is it in safe hands? Will they give a good image to our customer when they hand it off? We can see data in a particular way where we can visualize the entire company and see the demographics, the type of career path, how that person has stayed, how long they've stayed at the company, when do we need to take an appropriate intervention to help them stay, or perhaps to improve their career, or perhaps to help them with their family matters. These are things that we can go in and using data, perhaps pro to provide a proactive way to stay connected with the people that we work with, corporate social responsibility, or with the people that they are responsible for as well. The absenteeism, the overtime, these types of data we track, we use, but if we don't visualize, we can't make any decisions with. And let's go all the way down and understand who is the person 
their name, their contact. What do we do to bring them closer in? Further, is that with Google, if you go into Google locations, you're able to see where are the locations a person has visited over the entire lifetime that they've been using Google Maps. And so here, you can see the person has left from home, went to downtown, then to Changi Airport, went to the National Services Resort and Country Club for lunch, and so forth. That information is here. It's all right here. And Google offers that for free. But do we use it? We need to think differently about how we use our big data devices. For safety and for emergency response, these devices come in handy too. They tell us where we are, the latitude, longitude, and also the altitude. So you can tell, a, a first responder can tell how many people are on the 11th floor of the Hong Leong building on Raffles Key. This way, when there's an emergency, when there's a critical issue, they can go and have the right response, have the right people there, have the right type of support. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long said, in order for Singapore to be the first, the number one smart nation, we need to have an entrepreneurial culture. That means taking this information that you're hearing today and going and using it the right way, doing something with it. Imagine, you wake up in the morning, you walk over to the shower, the temperature is set exactly to the way you like it. As you come out, you go down to your car, naturally a driverless car, and you're able to sit down in it and your agenda for the day is presented to you. The car knows exactly where to take you. It knows your work. It drives you that, that direction and then stops you off at Starbucks. As you walk into Starbucks, you get a latte that you want to order. It's paid for and handed to you. Simply by walking in, you never had to reach into any pockets. When you get into work, the employer says to you, well done, well done. Your insurance rates have gone down. Why? Because your lifestyle, what you've eaten, what you drank, how you did exercise has really improved. We've noticed it. The insurance company noticed it too, and so your costs are less. Congratulations. If you only cut down on the lattes, even better. <laughs> so we were able to monitor this information because we've been putting chips into animals for the past 20 years. They're safe, they last, the animal it lives with them. Well, should we have those chips? That would help us to open the door, that would literally have robots hand things to us, knowing what we want, knowing what we need, knowing what we can afford. This type of world was imagined and envisioned more than several thousand years ago. Actually, in the Bible, in Revelations, it was said, a number will be placed on everyone in order for you to buy and sell. You will have to have this number. And it will make sense for safety, for insurance, for work, for every aspect. It will make sense for us to be part of that. You want that car to just open as you walk past? Here's your number. The car opens. The convenience is there. So we're at the tipping point. You've heard several different ways in which you can take this device out of your pocket, put it into your hand, and use it to understand more about the world around you. Use it to make better decisions, to help companies make better decisions. If you're in law, if you're in arts, if you're a faculty member like I am, understanding your students further as well. This data is here, but is it embedded into the way that we do our work? Does it help us to actually change the way we use data in daily life. Smart City is coming here to Singapore fast. Are we ready? One of my students, Shamir Rahim, who started VersaFleet, brought that data together into a system that allows companies to make better decisions about the trucks, the drivers, where to go. You can too. It's just across the street at Block 71 in US Enterprise. There's an opportunity for you to take your ideas and make them come into real life. I missed an opportunity. My mom, when she had that stroke, couldn't speak, couldn't write. I couldn't find out about a book that she had wanted to 
be able to tell the world about. She had written books in the 70s and we would talk. But sometimes sons don't spend the amount of time they should with their mothers. And so I didn't get to hear and understand what really she was going to write. And so I wrote a book about the journey to actionable intelligence. So that, that way people like yourselves that were going to get started on this journey in a new economy would be able to do it in a fast way. So what will you do to impact the way the world uses data. How will you change the ethics, make sure the policies are in place, and that actionable intelligence really delivers improved outcomes and improved lives? Thank you.